Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at another robot vacuum from 360 called the S5. If you're new to the channel and you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through everything you need to know about this robot vacuum. I'm going to be covering the unboxing features setup application and of course how well it performs. So without further ado, let's get started. In the box, we got the user manual, a spare center brush, the power adapter with four universal plugs, the charging dock, and the vacuum. Now that we know what's in the box, let's go over some of the features. The 360 S5 robot vacuum uses a LiDAR sensor to build out its maps. It has 2200 PA suction power with four different power modes to choose from. It can be used on hardwood, tile, stone, low pile carpet, and medium pile carpet. And as long as the transitions are 20 millimeters or less, it should have no issues crossing between each surface. It supports up to 10 different floor maps, making it perfect for multi-level homes. In terms of battery life, you can expect a runtime between 90 and 120 minutes, depending on the suction power being used. And should the vacuum run out of battery before a job is completed, the vacuum will automatically head back to the charging station to charge and then continue where it left off once it's charged up. It also features the ability to start cleaning jobs by voice command using Google Assistant or Alexa. The vacuum measures in at just under 14 inches in diameter and 4 inches in height, giving it enough clearance space to fit underneath most couches and tables. It's completely made of plastic with a matte white finish and features a 360 logo on the LiDAR sensor. On the top of the vacuum, you have the LiDAR sensor, the power button, which can be used to manually start a cleaning job, and then you have the recharge button, which can be used to send the robot back to the charging dock. Opening the top lid reveals a cleaning tool along with a 580 milliliter dustbin as well as the HEPA filter. On the bottom of the vacuum, you have a single edge brush, the cliff sensors to prevent it from tumbling down the stairs, and you have the center brush, which can be removed easily to clean. To begin, first find an area where your vacuum can navigate to and from without anything blocking its path. 360 recommends an area with a foot and a half on each side and four feet directly in front of the device. Once it's in place and powered on, make sure you install the 360 robot app on your phone. And once that's done, make sure you have your 2.4 gig wireless network ID and its password handy as you'll need it during the setup. To add the vacuum, just select the S5 from the list of available vacuums and follow the instructions to get it added. Once the setup is complete, you're ready to start your first cleaning job and get your map built out. has done a great job with the app, delivering one of the best in-app experiences from the vacuums I've tested. When you open up the app, you'll immediately get a glimpse of the vacuum's maintenance levels so you can keep the vacuum running efficiently. Clicking on the vacuum icon will take you through to the, all the available options for the vacuum. On this page, you have three different cleaning options to choose from, whole house, area, and room. When navigating through each option, there's a few view settings that are going to remain static across all three options. First, you have your floor map, which is going to show you all the rooms available on your map, as well as a live view of the robot's location. Just below the map, you have the statistics of your last cleanup job, which include the total area cleaned, the cleaning duration, and the estimated area of the job being run. On the last row, we have the recharge button, which sends a vacuum back to the charging station. The sweep button starts the selected cleanup job, to the right of that, we have the suction power button, which allows you to choose between four different power levels. And finally, we have the toolbox option, which takes you to some additional settings, 
that include map editing, multi-story management, which is going to have each of your individual floor maps, which you can name, load, or delete. Using schedule, you can create custom cleaning schedules to meet your needs. And my favorite option, RC mode, which allows you to drive your vacuum using the app. Going back to the individual tabs, let's take a closer look. On the whole home tab, you'll be able to start a full cleanup job for the loaded map, as well as set up your no-go zones and virtual walls. On the bottom left, you have a cool map feature to switch between a 2D view of your map and a 3D view of your map. While it's pretty cool to see in 3D, you won't be able to use this view to create no-go zones or virtual walls. On the area tab, you'll be able to run targeted cleanup jobs with multiple runs, using this option. Over on the room tab, besides being able to run cleanup jobs against targeted rooms, using the cleaning plan option on the right hand side, you'll be able to control the number of runs and the suction power for specific rooms. Over on the left, you have the smart cleaning button, which gives you the option to choose between cleaning rooms based on the order that you prefer, or the smart cleaning option, which will vacuum the rooms based on the most efficient path. Now that we've gone through the setup and the application, how does the vacuum perform? Well, I've been using it for a couple of weeks now, and I could say the overall experience has been really good. Using it on a daily basis to vacuum my entire floor, the vacuum was able to navigate throughout my home without getting lost or getting stuck between furniture. It didn't have any issues crossing various transition points in my home, including going from hardwood to low pile carpet. I did try to navigate it onto my high pile carpet, while it did get onto the carpet, it did take a few tries, and once it got on there, it started to struggle. To give you an idea of the amount of time it takes to complete a full floor cleanup, the S5 was able to complete 635 square feet in my home in an hour and 12 minutes using a single charge. Next, I'm gonna run through an area clean with one pass and standard suction to see how well it does at picking up fur, crushed crackers, rice, and cereal. Looking at the results, a majority of the debris was picked up, but there was some that was either left behind or moved around by the brush. Running a second pass removed most of that remaining debris. As I mentioned earlier, the S5 supports Google Assistant and Alexa to start and stop cleanup jobs. Running the commands using Google, it worked flawlessly. The only thing that would make it better is if I could run a target cleanup job, as well as having it go back to the dock when stopping a job. Start vacuuming. Got it. Starting the 360 robot vacuum cleaner S5. Sure. Stopping the 360 robot vacuum cleaner S5. Being able to use a vacuum on multiple floors is convenient, but does require some initial setup. Before you begin your first job on a new level, you'll need to bring up the docking station. Once it creates your map, you'll no longer need to have the dock present when running your jobs. While I've been using the vacuum on different floors, I've never lost or needed to recreate any of my maps. As the video comes to an end, I'm going to leave you with some sound samples from each of the different suction modes, so you can get an understanding of how loud the vacuum is.
If you're interested in the vacuum, I'll be leaving all the links in the description. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.